Early voting begins today. We are at the Wayne K. Curry Sports and Learning Center and the line is wrapped around the corner. We will have more details tonight on CTV News. Patricia Vallone with a CTV News update. Early voting is underway in Maryland. While more than 100,000 Prince George's residents used mail-in ballots, many have chosen to wait in line to vote in person. Keisha Botts has the story from the Wayne K. Curry Sports and Learning Center. I got here about 7.30, straight from work. I'm a nurse assistant, and I did 12-hour shift, 7 to 7. But I still need to be on this line because my vote counts. It's the first day of early voting in the state. People like Alice Ogar are waiting in line at the Wayne K. Curry Sports and Learning Center to cast their ballots. Ogar says she would rather vote by mail because she was in an accident, but she missed the deadline. The people in the past, Martin Luther King, um, all the rest of them, they went through a lot of pain with balls on their legs. So yes, I have to be here. While officials urged residents to request mail-in ballots due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Andrea Brown says she wants to make sure her vote is counted. I've always voted in person. I think it's safe, safer. I know everybody isn't able to vote that way, and it's good that there are more options for voting, but I've always voted in person. I think we still have to continue to have this normal, traditional way of voting so that all the problems that we used to have on all those things can be recognized and then fixed. The Wayne K. Curry Sports and Learning Center is just one of 11 early voting sites in Prince George's County. This is the line so far. It is wrapped around the corner. Officials are urging people to come prepared to wait in lines. We do ask voters to uh, pack their patients when they go to the early voting sites because we, again, we cannot forget that we're still in the middle of a pandemic, which means that we can only allow so many people in the facilities, in the early voting sites at one time. Many voters are just happy to cast their votes before November 3rd. I will wait in line forever if I had to. And do you mind telling us who you're voting for? What issues are you concerned about? Well, I'm voting for Biden, and um, uh, I'm concerned about the Affordable Care Act and having access to uh, health care. There are several safety precautions in place at all polling locations, including socially distanced lines, sanitizing election equipment, and you must wear a mask inside. If you choose not to wear a mask, you will be asked to vote outside. In Landover, Keisha Butts, CTV News. If you choose to vote outside because you don't want to wear a mask indoors, an elections judge will give you a provisional ballot to fill out. Meantime, for a full list of early voting locations, you can visit PrinceGeorge'sCountyMD.gov. CTV news crews today have seen long lines of voters at several early voting sites. From Laurel to Landover to Upper Marlboro, residents could be seen waiting for their chance to cast ballots. This was the scene at the Showplace Arena this morning. Early voting in Maryland runs from today through November 2nd. Polls open at 7 a.m. each day and close at 8 p.m. The State Board of Education is hosting two virtual meetings this week. And as Byron Scott tells us, the discussions will be dominated by the pandemic's effect on schools. I'm Byron Scott. The first meeting was held this morning. The second is scheduled for tomorrow morning. Well, several items are on the agenda for today in our opening statement. State School Superintendent Karen Salmon continued to push for the return of in-person teaching. Salmon referenced the Brown University study of some 200,000 students in 47 states. She says the infection rate for students was 0.13%. For staff, the infection rate was 0.24%. According to that report, says Salmon, schools are not super spreaders. Other items discussed at the meeting include a request to push back the second semester start of school sports from February 2021 to December 7 of 2020. The board meets again tomorrow morning at 930. I'm Byron Scott. 
Maryland health officials report 565 new coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours. To date, more than 140,000 Marylanders have contracted the virus. Here in Prince George's, 32,000 residents have tested positive. More than 400 people are hospitalized across the state. And statewide, there have been more than 3,900 confirmed deaths. Coronavirus cases have impacted all ages and racial ethnicities. Katira Jones has a statistical breakdown for Maryland. Here in Maryland, African Americans have the highest COVID-19 numbers with more than 43,000 cases. However, when it comes to confirmed deaths from the virus, the black community ranks second with more than 1,600 deaths. The Maryland Health Department reports that the white population has close to 1,700 confirmed deaths, which is the highest of all of the racial groups. The state's Asian population has the lowest confirmed cases with more than 2,600 people contracting the virus. The Hispanic community reaches close to 30,000 cases since the pandemic began. Reporting in Bowie, Katera Jones, CTV News. Amy Coney Barrett is set to be confirmed to the U.S. Supreme Court this evening in the Republican-controlled Senate. The final vote, scheduled for 7.30 p.m., comes just 30 days after Trump announced that he was nominating Barrett for the seat left vacant by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who died September 18th. The White House is considering holding a swearing-in ceremony for Barrett after the vote, either late Monday or on Tuesday. But the vote could be held later if Democrats force delays. And one of the people planning to attend tonight's Senate confirmation vote is Vice President Mike Pence. That's despite the fact that he was most likely exposed to COVID-19 by members of his inner circle. At least five of his closest aides have tested positive for the virus, including his chief of staff, Mark Short. Short has been isolating since Saturday. Pence and his wife, Karen, both tested negative and do not plan to quarantine. Well, parents, listen up. The Prince George's Health Department and the Prince George's School System are hosting immunization clinics. Vaccines were available today at wellness centers located at Bladensburg, Fairmont Heights, and Northwestern High Schools. The next immunization clinic will be held on Wednesday, October 28th from 9 in the morning until 4 p.m., in order to participate, families must register online. Pope Francis names the first African-American cardinal, and he's from our area. Wilton Gregory was installed as the first black archbishop of Washington, D.C. in 2019. Gregory is an outspoken civil rights advocate. He addressed the death of George Floyd, the unarmed black man who died after a white Minneapolis police officer knelt on his neck for nearly nine minutes. He also made headlines back in June when he blasted President Trump's photo opportunity hoisting a Bible at a Washington church. The photo op came after police used tear gas to clear demonstrators. Gregory will turn 73 just days after the naming ceremony for the 13 new cardinals next month. Police have identified the victim of a weekend homicide in Hyattsville. He's 35-year-old Michael Kamara. Early Saturday morning, Kamara was found shot to death in the 5300 block of Queens Chapel Road. Police say they do not think that the shooting was random. Meantime, police have arrested a Glen Arden man for a fatal shooting in Lanham. Rome Watkins is accused in the October 5th murder of Tavon Davis of Laurel. Watkins is being held on a no-bond status. Last week, we introduced you to filmmaker Darnley Hodge Jr. of Oxon Hill. Hodge's recently released documentary, The American Legacy of White Supremacy, or The American Lows, examines the role of race in America. Hodge says he produced the film over a course of six years. His project explores why some people value whiteness over blackness. So for me, The American Lows film and project is not a project that is about convincing people or convincing especially non-black people about what our condition is. This is about helping African Americans understand our own condition, understand our own history, and coming up with uh, deliberate strategic responses to it to help improve our collective condition rather than knee-jerk reactions that we think or hope or assume will lead to a, to, to a, 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 a better day, so to speak. And the documentary is available for purchase. For more information, you can go to theamericanlows.com. 
Hodge also created a companion series, web series that is, on the Black A More Films YouTube page. Would you like to search for new planets as a citizen scientist? NASA is looking for help figuring out which exoplanets are real and which are imposters, and you don't need to be a rocket scientist to participate. Once computers determine which objects in the sky need more examination, citizen scientists use their eyes to decipher space noise from reality. You're looking at pictures, at images, uh, of dots of stars, but the stars kind of look like dots, kind of blurry dots. And you're looking for ones uh, that are nice and, and tightly concentrated. The light is nice and tightly concentrated, not too spread out. And um, there is a tutorial right on the site to explain the details. Why do you need um, people to help you, assist you in this project? NASA Citizen Science Projects have been tremendously successful at harnessing the ingenuity of, of the public. Uh, We've had more than 138 uh, members of the public who have started with simple tasks like this and then gone on to devise their own research programs, read the professional literature, become co-authors on professional scientific publications. So I think of this, uh, this first step as just the beginning of a, of a deep rabbit hole. And for more information on becoming a citizen scientist, go to exoplanetpatrol.org. Well, let's get a quick check now on our three-day weather forecast. Tonight, mostly cloudy with a low of 54. Tuesday and Wednesday, mostly cloudy again with a high near 64 and a low of 50 degrees. Thursday, showers likely with a high near 66 and a low of 48. Now for your community calendar. Local organizations and residents are finding creative ways to keep Halloween spooky and safe. Bring your little ghouls and goblins out for an artsy night of fun. Dance and Body Works Incorporated presents Spook and Paint Night. The event is this Friday, October 30th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Dance and Body Works Dance Studio. And the event is for all ages. For more information, call 301-877-2245. And that's it for us this evening. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. Have a great night. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. When not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs>